Hi, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks Certification Program in Education Services here at Juniper Networks. This Learning Byte is going to cover uh, configuring host names and working with name resolution on Junos devices. So let's start with you know straight up device identification and it really couldn't be easier on a Junos device. As you can see here a couple of options for setting your host name and your domain name. We are under the edit system stanza of the CLI and as you can see it's simply the keyword uh, host name and you enter the name of the device and below uh, domain name and you enter the domain. It's, it's really as simple as that. Now in terms of doing uh, name resolution, you have a couple of options, and the first one is what we'll call off-device name resolution, and that's, you know, standard DNS resolution like we're all used to. So uh, in terms of configuring pointers to your DNS servers for a Junos device, again, we're in the edit system stanza of the CLI, and the keyword is name server here, and you can enter one or more addresses um, to point to your various DNS servers in your network. Once this configuration is committed, uh, when you type uh, some sort of command like a telnet or a ping, something of that nature, uh, and you're going to use a host name, well, you'll, uh, your device will make a, a name resolution request to these DNS servers. And, uh, you know, it's an easy option and a very simple configuration, as you can see. But an easy option uh, when there's DNS already implemented in your network, you can simply tie into that system. Now the alternate uh, option that's available to us here is what we'll call on-device name resolution. There's an element uh, or a configuration parameter here called static host mapping. And it's available on all Junos devices under the edit system stanza again. And you can see here that keyword static host mapping and you're going to enter you know, the number of hosts that you want to specify here in a kind of static fashion. So there's an example here of host name one, uh, that's the destination device of, of some device in your network. Uh, the INET parameter is an IPv4 address and you can add one or more addresses. Uh, there's also an INET6 option for v6 addresses as well. And there's also an option there to, to configure aliases. That's just shortened forms of, of these host names uh, if you want to use a shortened form on when you type in uh, into the CLI. And you can see another option there, hostname2, and, and it could carry on so you've covered, uh, or until you've covered, you know, as many devices as you want to, really, for your network. Now, when you uh, commit this configuration, uh, and you type in, again, a ping command or a telnet command or, or what have you, uh, the device is going to do name resolution on itself. It's going to check this static host mapping file, and it's going to, uh, you know, use the appropriate IP addressing to resolve uh, to the device you want to get to. Uh, good option when DNS is not implemented in your network. This is a good alternative. Uh, and it comes with one note, and that's to remember that, you know, this configuration is, is local to this device only. And so it's something you're going to have to do across all the devices in your network, or at least as many as, as where you want to use this feature. Uh, and you'll need to be careful to be consistent across the network so you're using the same host name conventions uh, across and throughout. So that takes us to the demo portion here. So we're going to get on to a router called R6, and we're going to work with uh, some host name and domain name configuration, and we're going to try and configure some uh, some DNS configuration and work with that static host mapping feature in an attempt to get over to uh, router RA there, or R7. Okay, so we're into our little lab environment here, and we are on uh, the router called R6, and in fact you can see that because its host name is right there in the prompt. Let's just uh, confirm that, though in the CLI, and there is our host name of R6. So let's configure a new host name and add a domain name as well. So as you saw earlier, that uh, is pretty easy to do. Let's call it my router. And let's set a domain name of, let's just use a, a, a neutral name here. And when I do a show command here and check our work, you can see right up at the top, there is our configuration. So let's commit that. And we'll see what happens here in just a moment. Here we go. So the system is committed. And what you can see here of note is our prompt, which includes our host name, has changed. So we've confirmed that that worked. Uh, now let's try some name resolution. So let's set a couple of name servers here. We'll add two to our list. And there we go. Simple as that. And let's commit. 
There we go. Now let's do a run ping to a device called router A. And what you can immediately see is the message cannot resolve router A. Uh, the host name lookup, it failed. Now I can tell you right away that the reason that that happened is because these name servers that I've entered, they aren't real. Um, this network doesn't use DNS and so the name resolution just simply isn't working. We're not able to resolve. And so in this network, we're going to need to try that alternate option, that static host mapping feature. So we're going to add that right here and right now. So let's make an entry to router A and we're going to point it to a, a specific address that actually is on our network, which is where router A is. And let's just add an alias here as well, RA, in case we want to type it in short form. So we do a quick show command. That all looks good. So let's commit that. And then we will test this out and see if our static host mapping is going to do the job for us. That looks good. And so let's try our run ping router A. And there we go. You can see that our router A host name resolved to the proper IP address and the pings worked. Let's also try our short form here and see if our alias worked. Yep, so the alias is working just fine as well. Now I want to do one more thing here just to show you um, uh, one little thing to keep in mind as a reminder. So I'm going to telnet to router A this time. And now something has happened that, that I want you to take note of and it is that we've telnetted to router A there's our, our resolution down to the IP address. However, when we've gotten over to, to router A, in fact, its host name that it advertises is R7. And that's simply, a, you know, I did this to remind you uh, of the point that, you know, this is a, a localized name resolution system. And so you called it router A on this device, but that doesn't mean that it's actually the host name of the device you're trying to get to. And in this case, there was a mismatch. So, uh, you know, that device's name was R7. So, so simply a reminder to, you know, be consistent through the network and make sure you're translating everything um, consistently and appropriately. So some options for you in terms of getting more information. Uh, first is a, a training option, the course Introduction to the Junos Operating System, uh, a one-day introductory course that includes some work uh, on getting a device initially up and running, and that includes some work with host names and domain names and uh, name servers and that sort of thing. Of course, there's always free product documentation, um, uh, you know, appropriate for your device. And finally, the free downloadable day one guides. I've listed a couple of them there. Uh, in, again, introductory types of uh, walkthroughs of getting your device up and running and includes, uh, you know, hands-on work with some of the, the configurations we've been working on here in this Learning Byte. And with that, that takes us to the end of this Learning Byte. Hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, we'll talk to you on the next one. Bye for now. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.